Dear students, now that we are more comfortable with the concepts of eigen values, let us move closer and try to understand how we can use understanding of these concepts to learn about eigen decomposition and what are the advantages of it from the perspective of machine learning. Now in the context of eigen spectrum, we learned that when whenever we put all the eigen vectors associated with particular value of lambda, they would classify to be called as eigen space as they will span certain subspace. And we learned that number of independent columns would be the dimension of that subspace. We can extend this concept to define eigen spectrum, which is said to be the collection of all eigen vectors of A. And when we put all these things together, that would give rise to some interesting definitions that we will learn into this topic. Now, we say that A is n cross n. And if we say that there are n independent, and whenever we are talking about independence, we are talking about linearly independent vectors are associated with a matrix of size A cross n. And these vectors are a special vector, what we call as eigen vectors. So in that case, we say that our matrix is non defective. However, if we have n cross n matrix and we have m number of independent vectors where m is less than n, we would say that our matrix is defective. And whenever we have matrix as classified as defective or non defective, that essentially would govern whether our matrix can be diagonalized or not non-diagonalizable or it cannot be diagonalized. And what this diagonalized mean, this would become very clear as we move to our this discussion. Now, we learned that, let us say that we are given a vector which is expressed with respect to non-standard basis. So these bases are represented by B and we want to apply some transformation A phi on that such that the new vector is scaled something like this. And we do not know that what this A phi would look like with respect to standard basis. On the other hand, we know that if we bring this particular coordinate system into standard basis by changing the basis, if you remember, we learned that B inverse AB can be a transformation applied to A phi where we can bring this entire system into the standard Cartesian system. Then we simply say that since we want to achieve a scaling in, in standard Cartesian coordinate, this scaling would simply be multiplying this vector by some constant. And if we have a vector in multiple dimension, that would mean if we multiply it with the diagonal matrix, so let us say D1, D2, D3 and 0 everywhere. That would also achieve scaling for us in multidimensional system. And in case of single dimension, D2 and D3 would vanish. So we are essentially multiplying it with the constant. So we say that we multiply it with the diagonal matrix. We obtain some basis change from here to here. We apply some transformation P inverse which gives us the standard Cartesian system. And you can recall our videos on basis change that we can always go from one basis to another within the same dimensions, also in other dimensions and so on. And finally, since we are working in non-standard basis, we will take the inverse of inverse. That is, if P is, is the transformation we are taking from here to here, uh, P inverse is the transformation. If we have to take do the inverse impact, we will multiply it by P. And then we can say that A phi bar would be equivalent to P inverse DP. And we say that this matrix and D matrix, they are similar. And this is the entire discussion which we had when we were talking about introduction to linear algebra. Now, when we are talking about diagonalizable matrices, we, we are saying that a matrix is diagon can be diagonalized if and only if it is non-defective. 
so we do not want to deal with defective matrices that would mean that if it is of size n cross n we should have n independent vectors if n independent vectors can be obtained then we can always write the basis p in terms of these n independent vectors and these n independent vectors have to be eigen vectors associated with p now the beauty of this result is that it would make maths much simpler you can always think of it like a factorization that we had a complex transformation and now we have found some simple components like p like diagonal matrix is the simplest matrix that we can encounter similarly once we calculate the eigen vectors they are the characteristics associated with any matrix that we are dealing with hence this factorization is much simpler much more intuitive than any other matrix that we would deal with and that is why we always are concerned about the diagonalization now when we are talking about d and p for matrix to be diagonalizable we can always say that since we are talking about n independent linear uh, independent eigen vectors these eigen vectors should form bases of rn and hence that implies if there are n eigen vectors which form the basis of rn only then we can say that particular matrix can be factorized into its eigen components and this entire process of decomposing a given matrix into the smaller components of p d p inverse is called as eigen decomposition also this eigen decomposition has lot of advantages once you know the decomposed value the determinant of a can simply be determined by taking the determinant of both sides and we we can see that this can be written as determinant of p d p inverse which would be determinant of p times a determinant of d times determinant of p inverse and since this is determinant of p and p inverse would be reciprocal of each other the determinant of a can be quickly deduced as the determinant of d and we know that when we are given a diagonal matrix along which we have lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and so on the product of lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 in the case of diagonal matrix would give us the determinant of d so by just looking at the similar matrix of a we can easily deduce what is going to be the value of determinant of a complex matrix and this is one of the many advantages of dealing with the decomposed form now one thing is that whenever we are talking about eigen decomposition that is only applicable to the square matrix however we know that most of the real world data sets that we would deal with are not going to be square so in next video before we will uh, before the new concept will solve one specific example on eigen decomposition we will learn about the generic form of eigen decomposition which is also applicable to the rectangular matrices and we call that particular decomposition as singular value decomposition thank you